So I'll just tell you a little bit about Restore um, for anyone who is new. Um, so Restore is a ministry for moms that's based out of Holy Redeemer Parish in Ottawa. Um, but uh, the beauty of virtual events is that we can gather with people from farther away, which is great. So, um, and the mission of our little group is to give moms the tools to transform their motherhood and develop a daily prayer life and um, restore their relationship or restore their identity as daughters of God. So uh, how our gatherings usually work is we have kind of a more practical talk, um, just giving you some tools and allowing us to talk about um, how we do things as moms to kind of figure out our schedule, different things, um, to allow us to have the time to then um, develop a prayer life. So then our second talk is always uh, something spiritual. Um, and the talks are relatively short because we're not experts uh, in any <laughs> way. So um, we think the real value is just us getting together as moms and talking and sharing our experience. So there'll be a lot of time for small group discussion and just sharing our experiences with each other. So um, today, Katie is going to be leading us. So I will turn it over to her. Thank you. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. So as you know from the event description, we're going to be talking about making a fresh start. It's the beginning of a new year. So um, we thought that was kind of an appropriate way to to start off the year. Like, how can we, um, yeah, start fresh. So for the practical side of it, um, I want to talk a little bit about setting goals. Um, but it's kind of funny to me that I'm giving a session about setting goals because I've never considered myself to be a particularly goal-oriented person. Um, but as 2020 was drawing to a close, I found myself thinking a lot about uh, what I could do to make some changes in 2021 to make the new year feel different. Um, I feel like I'm seeing comments and memes all over social media expressing a desire to just be done with 2020. And I'll admit, I felt that too. But if you think about it, like the calendar has a different number on it, but we're still in the same pandemic. We're still in the same situations that we were when 2020 ended. Beginning a new year is a really pretty arbitrary as far as our life circumstances are concerned. But this is true every year. And every year, many of us still make New Year's resolutions or set goals. And why shouldn't we? Uh, I think it's good for us to hit the reset button every so often and be intentional with changes we want to make in our lives. So what if starting a new year is arbitrary? If it gives us an excuse to make some kind of fresh start in our lives, they say, let's take advantage of that and use the momentum of the new year to make some changes, however small they may be. I think we need that this year more than ever. So as I was thinking about New Year's resolutions, I had the theory that most of the resolutions that we make have to do with our own self-improvement. Uh, so I looked for some lists of the most common resolutions and I'm going to share my screen. That over. Can I see that? Uh, so here's one list that I found. So with the exception of that last one of spending more time with family and friends, which hopefully will be a reality in 2021. Um, I think that my theory is true. The changes that we want to make in our lives start with us, with building better habits. They aren't impacted by a global pandemic. They're things that we can start now, at home, lockdown or no lockdown. As I was preparing for this, I listened to a bunch of podcasts, read blogs, watched YouTube videos, just trying to gain some insights into goal setting because it doesn't come naturally to me, remember. 
Um, and a few things stood out. Um, so there were several mentions of SMART goals, which I had heard about before, uh, mostly in a work context. <clears throat> so SMART goals, so that stands for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Um, I think that SMART goals can be great for certain circumstances, and there might be changes you want to make where setting a SMART, SMART goal would be really helpful. One example in my life where I think I should apply this is wanting to cut back on screen time, both for myself and for my kids. Saying, I want to cut down on screen time is really vague and also difficult to do without a concrete plan because it's just so easy to let them watch just one more show or for me to just keep scrolling on Instagram when I should be prepping supper. Um, so I still need to make my plan more concrete, but there are a couple of things I'm doing to work towards that goal. Um, my husband is currently doing Exodus 90, which is a Catholic spiritual exercise for men where he's giving up a whole bunch of things including social media for the 90 days leading up to, so to Easter. So in solidarity with him, I decided to give up Facebook and Instagram as well for those 90 days. And then my plan for the kids is to have more of a plan and more concrete time limits for screens in place by the time Lent starts, which will be the halfway mark of the 90 days. It's not a smart goal yet, but you guys can keep me accountable to making it one. <laughs> but that brings me to another definition of a goal that I really liked, um, which is kind of the opposite of SMART goals. Um, and I'm just going to read this excerpt from this blog rather than trying to paraphrase it. <laughs> so she says, when I say goal, what do I mean? What do you mean? The possibilities are vast, and that's the problem. Setting goals could be abstract, like finding better work-life balance, specific, like painting the garage, personal, like feeling comfortable in my skin, idealistic, exercise 60 minutes every day, or aspirational, get off social media. You probably have a goal that falls into each of these categories, but the problem lies in having one mental file folder marked goals and sticking everything inside. Having a better relationship with my husband and remodeling the guest bathroom require very different skill sets, yet I approach them the same way, like a crazy person. She goes on to say, a goal is a purposeful direction, not a destination. If you see a goal as a purposeful direction and not a destination, you won't be as discouraged by the urgent, the children, the lack of time, or the fear. Checking the box is not the end game. That's what we hear and what we've been taught, but perhaps that doesn't work for you. Instead, place yourself on the path and start walking. Sprint, stand still, fall backwards, but stay on the path of your personal purposeful direction. So the blog continues and sets out some parameters of how to see and live out goals as a purposeful direction. And I'll share the link with you guys after because I think it's a valuable read. Um, for the sake of time though, I'll just share one aspect that stood out to me in this blog post and actually in a lot of the content that I was reading and watching um, in preparation for this. And that is to start small. Let's set ourselves up for success by starting really small taking tiny baby steps along our path of purposeful direction. Some of us might be in a place mentally and emotionally where we can do something like setting SMART goals, but some of us and probably all of us to some extent are feeling weighed down and overwhelmed by the unpredictability of life right now. And maybe all we can do is choose one little thing, one small step to start taking. In the blog, she suggests doing that one little thing for 30 days. And at the end of the 30 days, either continue doing that little that thing or think about if there's another small step that you want to add or switch to. Expect to stumble, 
celebrate your victories and remember that what matters is that you just keep walking on that path of purposeful direction. A couple examples um, before we head into our small groups. Uh, so one podcast that I listened to, one of the hosts was talking about how she wanted to get up earlier in the morning before her kids got up to pray and have some quiet time to herself. But the prospect of getting up at 5.30 in the morning, which was her goal, felt too intimidating. So all she did was set her alarm for five minutes earlier than she had been. And then each week she moved it five minutes earlier, five minutes earlier until she got to 5.30, which I thought was like a really neat way of just kind of like taking those baby steps. Um, and then uh, Haley, here in our group inspired me with another small step. She said she wanted to start praying the rosary every day, but as a busy mom of three, what that looks like is that she listens to the rosary while going about her day, sometimes distracted, but still getting in more Hail Marys than she otherwise would. And she happened to mention this to me on my first day off social media. And I thought to myself, that's something really small that I could commit to. So I've been doing that too. And I really like it. So that is um, all I have for that. So we can move into um, discussion time. Um, basically, just like let's encourage each other with like what are some some small steps, some yeah, small steps we can take towards our goal or our goals. Um, I will share my screen again. Um, so one thing that we can do is like, if you take a picture of these questions and then you have them in, actually I can post them in the chat too if that helps. I'm not sure if everyone will be able to see the chat in breakout Oops. rooms anyway. So everyone just take a picture okay. or someone in your group will take a picture. Um, all right, so I will turn it over to Katie for our spiritual um, talk. <laughs> Katie, go ahead. Yep. Thanks. Um, okay, so um, one clear way that I found to make a fresh start uh, in my spiritual life is by choosing a word for the year. Um, I'm sure that this concept has been around for a while. I don't know if it's something that you guys have heard about. Um, but it's really only in the last few years that I heard about it through the Abiding Together podcast. Uh, since then, I feel like I'm noticing more and more people talk about it on social media, wherever. Um, but um, sorry. So yeah, so I don't know if this is a new concept for you, or maybe you've heard of the idea, but you aren't sure what the point is of choosing a word or how to go about doing it. Or maybe you have done this before and you'll be able to share some insights with the group. But for the sake of all of us being on the same page, I'm going to play a couple of clips from the Abiding Together podcast and let them explain better what this idea is all about. Um, so the, the podcast, if you haven't heard it before, there's three hosts. Um, the voice that you'll hear first is Sister Miriam James Hyland, who is a nun. And the other two hosts are Heather Kim and Michelle Benzinger. Uh, both of them are married and have children. Um, so this episode is from January of 2019. Um, 
and they've like they've done an episode every year but this one i felt like they kind of gave the best explanation of like what is the word for the year and how to choose it so i am going to share my screen and audio again Um, but yeah, so here we are, ladies. We're going to transition into literally a new year, a new calendar year. And something that we've done the last couple years is we talk about our very first episode of the season. We talk about a word for the year. And so we know this is not everybody's thing. So people are like, oh, word of the year, what does that mean? But we just want to offer this to you as something that we've been praying about. And you might find that as you spend time with the Lord, that he's going to reveal some themes for you for the coming year for 2019. And so we each have prayed about it and we pondered it and we have a word that we believe God is speaking to us for the year, which will be beautiful to see how it you know, kind of intertwines and kind of weaves itself into the entire year. But here's the cool thing. We don't know what each other's word is. <laughs> so so as best. you listen to us, we're about to find out from each other, which is which is going to be really fun. So um, we have a little mm -hmm. quote for you. If people wonder like how much we plan our <laughs> podcast. Sometimes we plan a little more than others. You know, this particular one is like a couple of notes on a Google Doc that Michelle gave out to us last night. So this is all real mm -hmm. in the moment conversation. Oh yeah. It's, it's like real time happening. And I think whose idea was this a couple years ago? Who had this idea? Was it, which one of you were like, me. What, so tell us about it, Michelle. It like, me. where does that come from? I had seen someone else that had done it like a word for the year. And I loved something about, like you said, having a theme for the year or word for the mm -hmm. year, like really praying through that. Like what is like a direction that you want, mm -hmm. that you feel like the Lord is leading you for that year or something that he wants to really cultivate in your heart or something that you really just need the spirit to say to you mm -hmm. um, that year. And uh, yeah, so I always love it because, you know, it's something. Yeah, eleven. Hello, Abiding Together podcast listeners. This is Michelle. And Sorry, guys. That's a fun photo, by the way. Thanks. Why is this not working? You guys could hear that up to now though, right? that you want, that you feel like the Lord is leading you for that year or something that he wants to really cultivate in your heart or something that you really just need the spirit to say to you um, mm -hmm. that year. And uh, yeah, so I always love it because, you know, it's something for me, it roots me in the year. Like it roots me, like the direction mm -hmm. that my spiritual life needs to go in, the direction like my heart needs to go in and keep on returning back to that word and saying, okay, Lord, how do you want to cultivate that in me this year? Um, so mm -hmm. I love it. I just think it's a great spiritual tool and just kind of fun too, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it gives you something to look forward to and keeps you going in the right direction. <laughs> and it's super fun at the end of the year to reflect back on the word and like how that came to fruition, like throughout the year, like this last year, I felt like, yeah, there was major fruit that came from that word mm -hmm. and it took on a whole life of its own that I was not expecting. So praise God. Praise God. There you go. Amen. 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 So we're going to offer you a little quote from Henry Nowen, which is really beautiful to kind of frame this, um, this time. And so Henry Nowen says this, he says, we must learn to live each day, each hour. Yes. Each minute as a new beginning, as a unique opportunity to make everything new. Imagine that we could live each moment as a moment pregnant with new life. Imagine that we could live each day as a day full of promises, Imagine that we could walk through the new year always listening to a voice saying to us, I have a gift for you and can't wait for you to see it. 
imagine. <laughs> I love that. Mm. Uh, there's something, I think we've said this before, but there's a great saying in the 12 step groups that you hear often where they say, you know, you can begin again each day. Like you can start over the morning again, several times if you have to. So, you know, we're starting out this new year and it's very traditional for people to make new year's resolutions, which I have mixed feelings about, but people do that. And, and just to remind us that, you know, it's a new beginning on in the calendar, but it's also each day is a new beginning and you can begin again throughout the day. So amen. Amen. All right. So, um, we're going to have a couple questions of kind of like the, to frame our conversation. So is our word of the year. And um, I'm looking at our Google doc and Heather's making comments in our Google doc, which is great. I'm laughing right now, but that's okay. So, uh, so the word for the year. So number one, like, why is it useful in your spiritual life? How did you discern it? How do you cultivate it? And then how do you invite others into your word to bear fruit, which I absolutely love. So we're going to each share our word and we're going to talk about kind of the aspects of that word. And so, um, I don't know, ladies, who gets to go first? Are we going to like- Heather, Heather. Rock, paper, Heather. scissors. Definitely Michelle. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> Michelle. I did the Google Doc, so I'm not going first. Heather, you can go first. All right, yeah. fine. I will fine. take one for the team. I um, love it. Thank you, uh -huh. Heather. Okay. So I started praying about this um, kind of at the beginning of December. I was like, okay, Lord, you know, and it takes a while for me to, to just like settle in and listen to God. I don't know about you guys, but I just find there's a lot of distractions and, and I want to make sure that it's the Lord's voice, you know, not just my voice or my ideas or what I would love the word, you know, to be like, I want it to be something exciting or something comforting or something like, you know, your, your word for the year is spa. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you know, it's a, your word for the year is Manny Petty. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's really about like opening my heart to like, Lord, what do you want to say? What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. What do you want from me? What do you want for me? And trusting that God wants to speak. God wants to speak into my life because He's personal, because it's not just one word for all humanity. You know, He He mm -hmm. has something for me for my life, and He cares about the details. So my word for the year is What oh, was her word for the year? <laughs> and listen to the podcast if you want to find out her word for the year. Um I can just her word for the year was moved. But um I'm gonna pause there um because don't listen to the whole podcast because it's long. Um, you can listen to it on your own if you want to. Um, but I just want to share briefly about my experience of choosing a word for the year. So the first time I did it was actually after hearing this podcast in 2019. Um, I chose a word, but I wasn't very purposeful about it. And I kind of forgot about it. So we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> However, <laughs> towards the end of 2019, I started thinking about it again, and it was actually on the first Sunday of Advent during Mass that I felt really convicted of what my word for 2020 would be. Um, my husband and I have been going through kind of a rough patch in our marriage, and he is actually away um, on a trip. Um, I honestly can't remember if there was something in the Mass readings or if I was just struck by the newness of the liturgical year and the new year approaching, but I just felt the word new resonating. And I had a strong sense that the Lord was promising to do new things in my life and particularly in my marriage. It was um, very moving. I was holding back tears in the middle of mass. A few days later, I saw my spiritual director and she gave me a bookmark with a scripture verse on it that also had the word new which was kind of a confirmation for me that that was going to be my word. But unlike the year before, I didn't just choose the word and forget about it. The word kept standing out to me in scriptures and in songs. Um, the main scripture verse that stood out to me was, see, I am doing something new. Do you not perceive it? So I got a letter board and put that verse on it. Um, my daughter had access to it and she took off the letter M's, but they were on there for the majority of the year. <laughs> Not sure where they are right now. Um, so I had that on my fireplace mantle in my living room all year as a reminder. 
if I was feeling discouraged, I could reflect on the promise that God spoke to me in that word. And it was amazing to reflect at the end of 2020 on all the new things that God had done in my life. His promise of doing new things in my marriage definitely came true. Uh, we did a lot of work and we experienced a lot of healing. And then when the pandemic started, my word felt a little bit comical. And I said to God, you're certainly doing something new right now. <laughs> Um, a couple other things from the podcast episode that I wanted to, to mention. Um, so choosing a word for the year, it doesn't mean that the word is everything. Um, but they say like, when God speaks, we should listen. It's not a fortune cookie kind of idea. Um, it should stem out of relationship with God. He wants to open our ears to hear his voice. Uh, there is is power in speaking it out loud or even just writing it in a journal and claiming it um and they also encourage encourage us to find scripture that go along with the word um so i mean for me last year it that kind of happened really naturally uh for this year i think i'm gonna have to put some effort into finding some scripture but like they say if there's a word that's resonating with you like just google it like what's a scripture that goes with this word or has this word in it um so on that note of um like scripture and allowing like scripture to inspire us um i'm gonna just play this one other clip from the podcast um where they will talk about um, a scripture that we can reflect on. And I just need to get to that part of the episode. Hopefully it doesn't stall on us again. Because God has anointed us and, and it's really important that we walk in that anointing. So I, because it was just in 1999. It was right before the Jubilee year because I remember the Holy Father chose it for the Jubilee year. And right. Share this again. I was, it was the first time that I was like, whoa, God mm. spoke to me. Like God spoke to me and it was reiterated, you know, in, in the voice of the Holy Father and in the church. But I think that this scripture uh, is one that can anchor us through the year because God has anointed us, and and it's really important that we walk in that anointing. So it's Isaiah 61. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. He has set me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the mm -hmm. year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. And the scripture goes on. I mean, it's an incredibly beautiful scripture, but mm. I, I would just like to offer to our listeners, you know, if, if you're like, I don't know how to do this. I, I don't know how to, to listen to the Lord or hear his voice with a word. Like you might want to do Alexio Divina with that scripture to just sit with Isaiah Amen. 61, to read mm -hmm. through it and to just wait and listen. What is the word that stands out to you in that scripture? That That's a wonderful mm -hmm. scripture to sit with and to do that a few times and just listen to the voice of God and trust that he is good and he cares and he wants to speak to you. Yeah. Oh, thank you for offering that, Heather. That's an outstanding idea. I really love that on so many levels, but yeah, amen. That's a, it is such a rich scripture, and I, I'm yeah. What a great way to begin the year, delving into something like that, sitting with Isaiah, mm -hmm. right, and letting that word wash over us, and mm -hmm. yeah. And I think one good thing to remember is that when you're listening to the voice of God, and if you're wondering, is this really God's voice or is it my voice? Amen. Is to ask ask yourself, is this something that God would say? 
is it true? Mm -hmm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Is it beautiful? Mm -hmm. Like God isn't going to speak anything that's damaging over your life yeah. or anything that mm -hmm. is going to shame you. It might convict you, which is very different mm -hmm. than shame. Like conviction mm -hmm. leads you to freedom, whereas shame binds you deeper, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that those are good things to just like form your, um, like as you begin to apply some of this in your life, um, mm -hmm. to keep that in mind. Amen. Amen. Well, we're excited to hear maybe on our private Facebook group, if people, if people want to share, that would be great. Um, so yeah, I want to just both share that scripture and also what Heather was saying about like kind of how to listen to the voice of, of the Lord and, and how to know, like, if it's him speaking, he's only going to say things that are like good, true and beautiful. Um, so I wanted to also just give a couple minutes um, to reflect on that scripture verse. Or if there's another one that has been coming to mind, like feel free to, to look at that. Um, I'm not suggesting that you choose a word for the year in the next two minutes, but just want to provide you um, like a brief time to reflect on what God may be saying to you about the year ahead, uh, what promises of hope and restoration he wants to speak into you. So I'll, I'll flip back to the scripture verse so that you can see it, or if you have a Bible and have something else you want to look at or reflect on, um, we can do that. Oh, that is not the right song. Okay, we're going to go with quiet reflection.
So I know that wasn't very long, um, but I hope that God is stirring something in your heart. And I hope that you'll take some time later this weekend to spend more time with him and listen to his voice and what he wants to say to you. Maybe you're not sold on the idea of choosing one single word and having that be the theme for the year, and that's okay. But regardless of whether it's one word or a bunch of them, I believe that God wants to speak hope into your life in 2021. Life has been really challenging lately, but God is with us in it. He has good plans for the year ahead. So we'll spend some time with him and let him speak those promises into your life. One thing I want to mention about choosing a word for the year, um, if that's something that you want to do. So there, there are word of the year generators online. Uh, Jennifer Fullweiler, for example, has one where you just click a button and she gives you a word. Um, you might be in a place where you just don't know where to start or doubt that God is going to speak to you that clearly if you just try to listen for a word in prayer time. So I'm not saying don't use the word of the year generator, but if you do, use it as a starting point. Click through a few words if the first one that you get doesn't resonate. But then I would really encourage you to take the word or a couple of words to prayer. I think the Holy Spirit can definitely speak to us through technology, but he also wants to speak to us in the quiet of our hearts. And then if you have a word that stands out to you that's that's really resonating, then claim it. Share it with your husband, your close friends. As the year goes on, talk about how you've been living out your word, how you can pray for each other through the word and speak life into each other. Then uh, last year, at the end of January, a friend invited me to a gathering of women at her house um, where we all came to share our word for the year. Not everyone knew each other. Some of us were moms, some were single. I think there was 14 of us there. Um, And basically all we did was share our word of the year, how we'd been inspired by it, um, our hopes for how God was gonna speak into our lives through it. It was really beautiful and moving to hear all those stories of God speaking so personally and so uniquely to each of us. Um, and have the opportunity to really claim the word that was on my heart. So while we can't currently gather in someone's living room and share those stories over appetizers and a glass of wine, we want to give you the opportunity to share your word, validate it, and then be praying for each other throughout the year. So we're going to have a follow-up event to this one um, next Saturday with a morning and an evening option um, where if you, if you want to come, you just come and simply take turns sharing your stories and encouraging each other. And so we'll send out more information about that after. Um, so with that in mind, we'll just head into a bit of small group discussion again.